I loved getting to work with Cheryl. Uh, man, it was such a blast. You know, we're both uh, from the same part of the country, Missouri and stuff, and it was so fun getting to play with her. Um, she was such a great band leader. You know, um, Cheryl's really supportive, and because she was the side man herself, like, you know, going all the way back to, um, you know, singing backgrounds with Michael Jackson and stuff, she really, you know, has an empathy when you're in her band and is really supportive and cool. Um, but really creative musician, you know, plays a lot, so many different instruments. And so like um, her perspective is really cool with drums and drummers. She knows, she knows what she wants and what she likes. Um, in the studio, like some of her songs have such great parts and like, uh, mixture of like percussion and programmed elements with real playing like even back uh that hit um all i wanna do has that guiro and some cool shit going through it man it's great um that second record of hers i remember really falling in love with uh, some of the sounds on that uh, on parts there was a track on that called maybe angels where the snare drum um it's like an open snare drum but the way the compression's hitting it it's like bang dang you know just like this ring and how it gets in your face it's so cool and uh i think chad blake was involved in mixing some of that record um every day is a winding road there's this other track from that record where there's this bongo part starts the thing and really cool part you know and sonically the sound of it uh redemption day from that record has this brush kind of brush train pattern thing but just sonically the way it's treated you know so man her perspective on tones really cool um i remember getting to do something some things within the studio there was a track called uh hole in my pocket from the come on come on record that um when we first approached it you know it was sort of just like straight ahead like we were in a garage rocking out and uh she's like you know what can we do to make this a little bit more left of center something different than just you know like a band hashing it out, you know? And uh, so he took some time and, you know, found this some kinky programming elements like um, some bongos from a Japanese drum machine that we like pitched up an octave and um, some other little beatbox type sounds. And then the real drums come in on the chorus and, uh, but the way she treated them mix wise like the whole kit went through like a low pass type filter effect. So there was not a lot of high end. It was just like this chunky sound. And then there was a slap back on the drums, sort of reminiscent of uh, Instant Karma, that John Lennon track. And uh, so seeing, you know, being around and seeing how that track started and then how it ended up and her like sense of vision with the approach, you know, sonically and part wise and all that, it's really cool cool to see inspiring you know to be around there's another track on that record uh safe and sound which is kind of a, like this ballad thing but she really pushed it to have create this mood with uh sort of this programming loop thing up before the drums come in in the intro and the first verse and stuff super creative musician you know really really talented um and man the drummers in her band you know she has great musicians playing with her uh, Jeremy Stacy did it for a long, long time, and then great musician Victor Andrizzo, you know, and um, love him. Fred's doing it now, who I think is such a great field drummer. Love him, you know, love what Fred sounds like. But so, man, it was uh, it was great getting to work with her, and uh, thanks to Vader for pulling this together. I can't wait to uh, see the podcast. All right. Thank you.